Hello everyone, my name is Bradley and this is SumSub, a channel about how to survive in the online jungle. Now about a year ago, I made a video on how to disappear without a trace, how to effectively erase your digital footprint and also the crumbs that go with it, right? That might help to eventually track you down. Now this video was watched by over one and a half million people. And to be honest, I didn't actually expect such a huge response. But what's more, I actually stopped this video before the most interesting part could begin. So today, I'm gonna to figure out how to start a new life in a world where every single step you take leaves a digital footprint so vivid, it may as well be fossilized and kept in the British Museum. Maybe it's not too late to run away and start all over again. I gathered all of this information from open sources across the web, and I also verified it with some sub specialists, and yes, we have them. Now remember, please do not take any of my advice well, directly, okay? My aim is to effectively explore the hypothetical and not to deceive federal agencies, MI6, or the tax authorities. So like I said before, my name is Bradley, but I think this name will have to go. I mean, look at this, for instance. According to the Office for National Statistics, 310,474 boys were born in Britain in 1998. I actually never thought before about how my name was so unique, but that's pretty bad. If I keep it, it'll be far too easy for someone to find me. And therefore, let's use the same statistics here to find myself a more common name. So in 1998, almost 10,000 boys were born who were named Jack. And second and third places were James and Thomas. There were about nine and a half thousand of them. And in the top five most popular names were also Joshua and Daniel. There are actually about 7,000 of them. It's at this early step that inexperienced schemers often make a mistake. The fashion for names is changing rapidly. If you type in the most popular names in the UK in 2021, well, the result from Google will be completely different. Oliver, George, Arthur, Noah, and Mohammed will appear in the top spots. Whereas in 98, none of these were popular at all. And therefore it's worth choosing a new name that takes into account my age. Based on statistics from the end of the last century, I'll select a surname from the five most common. So my name is Taylor, James Taylor. And today I'm gonna to tell you how to start a completely new life, leaving your old one behind. So let's go. Now, first of all, do you know how much it actually costs to change a name? 42 pounds and 44 pence to be precise. That's about $50 if you're one of my US friends. And that's how much this totally legal procedure costs. And the process is actually very simple too. You just need to fill out a small questionnaire, pay the fee, and in three or four weeks, you'll be able to use your new name legally. Unsurprisingly, more than 85,000 Britons change their names every year using such a practice. Of course, in this case, it's not only the government or the police that have access to the information about your old name, because all entries are published on the Gazette website. And they're easy to find through a simple Google search too. And yet, real criminals still use this opportunity to change names. In recent years, more than 900 convicted child sex offenders have undergone name change procedures and have subsequently been able to get jobs in schools, kindergartens and hospitals. And therefore, if you have suspicions about the people around you, don't be lazy. Check the history of their name on said sources. Similar procedures exist in other countries too. For instance, in the United States, you can legally change not only your name, but even your social security number. American law actually makes it possible to replace your SSN in the case of identity theft. And this law is sometimes used by scammers who put their own data out there and then declare theft. The procedure takes longer than in Britain, but ordinary people can become completely new people through these procedures. But these, of course, are just legal ways to change your name. Real hardcore off-griders go even further. Let's bring out the dark web burner computer. Now on the dark web, you can easily find hundreds of ads for the sale of fake documents. I'm talking driver's licenses, passports, birth certificates, even fake degrees, which is something we're gonna talk about later. And the price of such documents depends on the credibility of the seller, the degree of reliability, and also the country of issue. Of course, in this video, I'm not gonna transfer money to the owners of these sites. They're all criminals, right? Regardless of whether they're scammers, if they say want an advance payment and then disappear with my money, or whether they're forgerers, if they really hand over the documents at the end of the day. But let's imagine that I was willing to take a risk. 
send, say, a couple of thousand dollars and uh, I would actually receive my order. Well, a couple of passports in different names, a driver's license, and even a degree in something like horse forensics could quite easily be acquired. So now I can travel around the world like a real secret agent, right? Unfortunately, not. Take a look at the cover of my British passport we've got here. Do you see this little thing down here? Well, what do you reckon that is, this icon under the word passport? It actually means that a chip is located there that contains a variety of different information. And the principle is similar to the NFC chips I talked about in the last video. The chip stores all of my personal data, my biometric information, and even a digital copy of my passport photo. And this is all in encrypted form. So it's almost impossible to fake all of this. But the interesting thing here is the only time we really face a comprehensive passport check like this would be at the border. It's really unlikely that your employer or say your apartment owner will check your passport using biometric scanners. Most people don't even know these things exist. And therefore, fraudsters usually travel using real documents. And it's only once they're in the country that they begin to use the fakes. Now, usually because of this, the documents are bought locally. It's too dangerous to carry fake documents in your luggage, for instance. And if they're found at customs, you'll be immediately taken into custody. However, there's a very big difference here between counterfeiting and forgery. Sometimes these documents are assembled from a myriad of different parts of different documents and sometimes fraudsters will actually take stolen documents and replace the photos of the owners. And here there's really no way you can choose a random name, so maybe I'll have to become some kind of Pedro Jimenez. Now, as a more complex alternative, fraudsters can take a blank passport and enter the required information directly, either that which has been stolen from real people or that which is simply fictitious, like that of James Taylor. Now, all of this will determine the price of a fake. The more complicated and expensive a fake is, the more useful it can be for more significant activities. So let's get back to my new life. I'm not planning to commit any financial crimes here. I just want a fresh start. And therefore, if I decide to move across borders, I'll use my real passport. And then, and only then, I'll use fakes. Moreover, if I decide to move somewhere like America, then instead of using one dubious passport, I'd be better off buying a fake driving license, an SSN card, and also a college diploma, all in the same name. For everyday life, these documents look more authentic. And besides, even a really good fake, it's unlikely to save you from a rigorous police check. And therefore, I actually won't be driving around. I don't want the attention of, say, traffic police. The driving license will only serve to confirm my identity at work and also when renting a house. Taking out a loan or a mortgage won't work either. I don't want to get involved with a fake credit history because, well, I don't need to draw that extra attention to myself. If I have any problems with the law, I'll, well, I'll have to use my real passport. It's better to have problems with an expired visa than, say, accusations of document forgery. Importantly, I haven't actually decided yet whether I'll move to a different country or not, but I know for sure that I'd preferably get lost in a big city. No one will pay attention to a new person in Chicago or Liverpool, but in Castle Rock or Darabee, someone will definitely be interested in the past of a certain James Taylor. But in any case, a little work will have to be done on the biography of said character. Now, this is where things get interesting. In the era of the total dominance of social media, to be without a Facebook or Instagram profile invites unnecessary questions. And therefore, I'll have to take care of creating a new social media persona. And first, I'll sort out my appearance. I'll have to radically change my hairstyle. I mean, I'll either shave my head completely or wear wigs until my hair grows out. I might combine this with a beard too, something I've actually never worn before. This will obviously only change my image, but it will give me the possibility to increase my age by 10 years. And I'll explain why that's important a bit later. And surely you've noticed that I tend to frequent the old Savile Row suit. Alas, they will have to be forgotten. Now I'll dress in the style of, I don't know, Jack Reacher. I'll use secondhand clothes from army stores, right? Army boots, work pants with a bunch of gadgets in my pockets. And under my long sleeve shirt, I'll wear weights. And all of this will eventually change my gait and overall image. I'll move slower with heavier steps and I'll just simply look different. Alternatively, I could go for maybe a hipster image with long hair and a beard. I might lose some weight, wear some baggy shirts, a necklace, and maybe get a myriad of very noticeable trendy tattoos. Either will work. 
And also, in either case, I will wear glasses. I'd buy a pair with weak lenses, probably around 0.5 or 0.75, because they can actually be worn by a person with perfect vision and they won't really cause unnecessary questions or discomfort to the wearer. Now my new image is finished, I'll deal with my Facebook page. And this is quite an easy part. I won't buy a stolen profile or imitate someone else's life. On the contrary, I'll create a socially new one. Now I'm using my fictitious name, but I'll change it slightly. For example, I'll use a shorter form and insert a nickname. So James Taylor will turn into something like Jim Duke Taylor. And this will hide me from those who are looking for the real James Taylor. And at the same time, I'll be able to show my profile to new friends or a realtor. For the avatar, I'll use a photo in my new style, but my profile picture won't be your straightforward headshot. I'll actually take a picture of myself against a noisy background. I'll reduce the photo to 300 dpi and I'll save it in low quality. I will of course remain pretty recognizable to my new acquaintances, but if a photo catches the eye of people from my past, they won't recognize me at all. Now these steps are gonna help to hide some of my characteristic facial features. All that remains is to protect the photo from an image search. And to do so, I'll use a cloaking algorithm. This will imperceptibly distort my face so that facial recognition systems won't be able to compare it to other photos either. The first and so far the only post on the profile will be the information that my old profile was hacked and that I decided to start a new one. This will explain the recent creation date of my account. As a finishing touch here, I might add some friends, uh, university that according to legend I graduated from and perhaps one or two places of previous work. The university of course will be real, well, the one that's listed in my fake diploma, but the friends and the workplace are completely fictitious. The random users service will help me to generate the faces of my friends, and I will create the names and logos of employers using namelix.com. Remember I said to you I'd choose an image that would make me look, say, 10 years older? Well, I need this so that there are no, well, unnecessary questions about my Facebook profile. So just like that, in the eyes of marketers, I'll belong to a completely different bracket of marketing. Indeed, I'll copy the habits of stereotypical introverts at the beginning of the 2000s, and I'll email more often than I'll use messaging apps. Maybe I'll reminisce openly on Facebook about the good old days and recall phrases from TV store ads. I don't know. I like to the world But any real deception here is easy to uncover, even through the most minor of inconsistencies. The more details involved, the easier it is to make a mistake. Any professional detective will confirm that this is you, and therefore, well, I'll need to draw my past with as many long strokes as possible with the brush. I was born in a working class neighborhood on the outskirts of London. My mother wanted me to go to university, so I had to study. When she died, suddenly I gave up. I tried to enlist in the army, but I wasn't accepted for health reasons, so I argued with my father and left home. I got a TEFL qualification and I moved to India, Hyderabad, to pursue a relationship with the beautiful daughter of a Maharaja. And I'll definitely have to work here. Even if I do have a well-lined wallet with Bitcoin from my previous life, it will be very difficult to explain this to the owner of a rented apartment. Your money can and should be earned online. Of course, if I'm gonna disappear, well, I can't be a presenter on a YouTube channel anymore. That'll all have to be left in the past. And in general, it's not advisable to attract more attention to yourself. Therefore, I wouldn't even consider a career as say a business coach or a binary options consultant. I would generally prefer well, not to meet with customers or colleagues in person. And I'd certainly prefer a small number of tasks from different companies to say one large project from one company. Performers of small tasks for lots of different companies attract less attention. So I need to find a modern version of say seasonal fruit pickers. But the answer for me here is quite obvious, copywriting. Now, according to statistics from the Payscale website, a novice copywriter can expect an annual income of around $42,000. To start a modest new life, that should be enough. I mean, well, of course, I have a rich vocabulary, I have experience writing scripts and a few marketing tricks up my sleeve, but, you know, of course, I won't be able to present some subscripts even under an Elias. And, well, to get an order, to get my first orders, I need a portfolio. 
And therefore, I'm going to work exclusively on my portfolio for the first couple of months. And no, I'm not going to be writing about cryptocurrencies and IT in general. The sphere of my interests will have to be something different, more straightforward and mundane. For example, the power tools market. But to form a portfolio, knowledge about cybersecurity will actually be useful to me. For instance, the first articles that I write, let's say market reviews, life hacks, comparisons, well, I'll just buy them from myself and write reviews. And to do this, I'll use other people's accounts, which are easy to find and acquire on the dark net. And through these accounts, I'll buy orders from myself. And of course, there will be no profit here. On the contrary, I'll actually lose money on commissions, but my rating will grow on the copyrighted exchange. And this technique actually used to be often used by new hotels on booking sites. Through fake people, they booked empty rooms and then wrote good reviews and gave high marks. Booking.com and Airbnb have already learned how to deal with this, but well, still works on some digital platforms for copywriters. And I'm obviously going to choose these smaller copywriting services that you know conduct as few checks as possible on their user base, and also those that allow, say, anonymous money withdrawal. And I think that in maybe three or four months, I'll be able to create a good reputation for myself and get my first real orders. And beyond that, well, it all depends on my brain. I reckon that in a couple of years, I'll be able to reach the level of, say, fifty to $60,000 a year, and that should be enough for a single guy living in a big city. Now, the people watching this might be thinking, well, what if I can't write well? Well, I would recommend, in any case, looking to a variety of different freelance professions. Remember, you've got that fake diploma, right? But look, is all of this really worth it? I mean, I thought a lot about real ways of disappearing in preparation for this video, but in the end, I realized that I would probably never use these ideas. You can never completely get rid of your memories. I mean, what drove you out of your house in a previous life is really likely to make an appearance again. And the life of a fugitive is pretty lonely. Hiding your past from others is also extremely difficult. Small mistakes, gestures, hesitations, all of these are inevitable. Unless you're really Jason Bourne here, people will just end up not trusting you. Relationships will be difficult. In order for the legend to last longer than its expiry date, you'd have to communicate with other people as little as possible. It's unlikely that you'll be able to create a new family. I mean, imagine if you met the right one. I mean, what are you going to introduce yourself by? Will you ever be able to tell the truth about yourself? Will they even believe you if you do? And an attempt to run away can also result in serious monetary losses, and you will inevitably run into trouble with the law. On the darknet, no one guarantees the quality of forged documents. You're not going to be able to submit a claim and return the purchase in any case. I mean, chargeback doesn't apply there. And what if you're caught with a fake passport or driving license? I mean, the penalty is prison in all countries over the world. Buying a forged document is effectively already a crime. Well, my name is Bradley. I mean, James, Taylor. And even if you do disappear, make sure to reappear with a new YouTube account and subscribe to SumSub once more. At least you've now got the advice needed to do so. I'll see you in the next video.